Okay, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today we're going to be focusing a bit on theory rather than, you know, drafting, playing, um, breaking down results, stuff like that. And I thought I would dig deeper into Vintage Cube and some of the hidden, you know, rules interactions, synergies, how, how cards interact with each other, and stuff like that. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. I have 10... Uh, different synergies lined up today. So let's just, just get to it. So the first one is, you know, the nerfed Black Lotus, Lionside Diamond, in a deck with Corpse Dance and or Shallow Grave. You can deploy the Lionside Diamond, you can cast Shallow Grave or Corpse Dance, and then respond by discarding your hand here. So let's say you have, I don't know, Atraxa, Gristlebrand, whatever the case may be. You kind of respond to your own reanimation by discarding your hand, you can choose the order um, that those cards go to the graveyard, and then you can kind of reanimate your your big creature that way. So Lionside Diamond is not only a card that's good with, you know, the draw sevens of the world, the, the underworld breaches. It can also be an enabler for, you know, hasty reanimation stuff. Worth noting is that you can't really take advantage of the extra three mana unless you have, you know, flashback cards or your big creature draws into more cards. But it is worth keeping in mind um, that this is like a poor man's entomb or whatever the case may be. Okay, let's move on to the next card. Talaran Academy. We all know this is awesome. If we ha pick this up early in the draft, we focus on artifacts um, when, you know, looking through the next packs, and that is great at all. Um, so this is basically just a reminder that we have clues in the cube. Those are artifacts. We have blood tokens. Those are artifacts. We have map tokens. Those are also artifacts. And then we have another clue card here in, um, in white as well. So this is basically why, sure, there might not be any actual artifacts in the packs, but maybe there are cards that you know generate artifacts. So this is a way to make your academy even better than you end up with a mana sink. Whether that's, you know, hard casting a portal to Phyrexia or a big walking ballista, activating Urza a bunch of times, Retrofit or Foundry, that's kind of up to you. But I just wanted to highlight that some of these cards can actually help your artifact count. Um, and even cards like Glimmerlens I could have had on this list is a, is a good one. Porcelain Legionnaire out of white. Um, a lot of those cards are hidden artifacts, even though they're aggro cards nine times out of ten. The next one is a bit more of a rules question thing. So Bone Crusher Giant, the stomp part of this card, uh, says two damage for any target, damage can't be prevented this turn. So if you resolve this card, you can um, break through stuff like the One Ring Protection or Trunum Nemesis Protection because protection prevents damage um, on a rules basis, right? Questing Beast, the same thing. Combat damage uh, that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. So if you have Questing Beast out, your opponent's true name doesn't do anything when it comes to protection. It can also break through the one ring uh, protection, which is kind of unique. I know this is a thing in modern where you use these two cards sometimes, you know, to break through the one ring. But it's something we can incorporate in Vintage Cube as well. Um, next up, we have this card, Magda, which is on the surface kind of hard to evaluate, right? So you have a 2-1, it pumps all your dwarfs. When you go through the list, I don't think there's a single other dwarf, so that current that thing is kind of irrelevant. And if you get five treasures, you can search for a dragon. I mean, that is kind of cool. But what I want to highlight is the fact that this card doesn't need to attack in order to create a treasure token. It just needs to get tapped. We can do that with a couple of ways in the cube. We have crew on uh, Smuggler's Copter, and we have saddle on... Caustic Bronco. So that's just kind of a cool way to not, you know, expose your Magda in combat, but still get the treasures. I also wanted to um, highlight the fact that Gobble Rebel Master making the 1-1 one -one that is oftentimes, you know, just going to die from a bigger blocker. So on a on a board where the opponent is stable, you can kind of you can crew with that 1-1 one -one through your copter, and that, that way kind of preserve the 1-1. One -one. Worth noting is uh, that Saddle is... Sorcery speed, so you can't make that trick with Rabble Master and Bronco. Up next, we have Mister's Workshop. It's kind of like the Academy topic, where it's going to be somewhat obvious which cards you can power out with it. You know, everybody knows that you know the One Ring, Coveted Jewel, uh, Mirror Battle Sphere, whatever the case may be, that those are good to power out with Workshop. But I wanted to highlight some of the more, you know, less obvious ones. The Seeker's Chariot is a card that's oftentimes just a you know good haymaker, planeswalker type card. <laughs> 
but you can actually power it out with a workshop and playing this card turn two off a workshop is borderline disgusting um i really enjoy that then we have cryptic code you get a little bit you get a small discount here cryptic code is a decent card you might already be playing blue since you're playing artifacts there's the most cross synergy and you can kind of accelerate out um kind of like a seated traders or ancient tomb would uh with workshop and it's kind of the same with shorikai a card i'll play in most blue white decks no matter if i have any artifact synergies at all um but this is also a card you can accelerate out with workshop which isn't very intuitive if you just you know play it on face value you look at the casting cost you don't think of it as an artifact right um next up we have entomb which most players know is awesome with putting a big creature into the graveyard, reanimating it, and, you know, basically winning the game. But sometimes you have to get creative with Entomb, and you maybe play it as a consistency card in decks like Thopter Sword. You can go get Sword of the Meat, put it into the graveyard, and if you have another artifact to get the Thopter Foundry going, this comes back and we have our uh, infinite combo. You can use it in uh, Underworld Breach decks to tutor for either LED or um brain freeze or lotus petal and then if you draw your um if you've already drawn your underworld breach it's kind of a you know vampiric tutor demonic tutor type card um you can also go for echo beyonds i missed putting this on the list go for echo beyonds and like create your own time twister also just it's just good to you know Reanimator might not be open, but maybe you you want this consistency card for your Underworld Breach deck, right? Or your Top the Sword deck. So Entomb, pretty pretty decent uh, enabler overall, even though you're not straight up Reanimator. Then we have a card like Lelia. Lelia is pretty complicated. So whenever Lelia attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until end of turn. So that's like the Chandra effect, basically. And then it says, whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your library and or graveyard, put, put a plus one, plus one counter on Lelia. So this fuels itself both with cards and plus counters, but it interacts with a lot of other mechanics. So we have the Lion Sash and the Scavenging Ooze. You can, you know, start exiling your own graveyard for as much mana as you have available. You can grow the Lelia. The good thing about these cards is that it does it one at a time, which Lelia is very happy about. Lelia doesn't, like, if you get Tormat's Cryptid, Leyline only gr uh, Lelia rather only grows with one. Um, so if you do it one at a time, it's just better for Lelia. Um, as I said, Chandra Torture Defiance, same thing. You exile a card from the top of your library. That is nice. And that also grows to Lelia. It's the same with Delve spells. I believe Treasure Cruise is gone from the cube for the time being, but um, Dig Through Time is there, so you can grow your Lelia by one. With Thrum Even though you delve six cards, you only grow it by one. It's the same with flashback cards. Um, Firebolt, Lingering Souls, Faithless Looting. Maybe there are more. I'm not sure. And it's the same with Underworld Breach every time you escape. Same with Uro. Same with Flage. Escape also grows your Lelia. So Lelia is a card that can all of a sudden get way more value as the, as the game goes on. So now we have Currency Converter. This is another super complicated one. So it has a static ability. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. Okay, fair enough. You can loot for two mana, sure. Then the tap ability is put a card exile with currency convert into your graveyard. If it's a land card, create a treasure. If it's a non-land card, create a 2-2. Two -two. So you will note that while it fuels itself, it's basically like Lelia this way. It also get enhanced, uh, its effect gets enhanced by other cards. So let's look at some other, you know, incidental discard type cards that... Yeah, you might end up uh, having that um, interaction, right? Psychic Frog. You discard a card to grow the Psychic Frog. If that's an unland, great. You can exile it to Currency Converter, get a free 2-2. Two -two. If you Wheel of Fortune, you get a bunch of cards under um, Currency Converter, maybe. Uh, and you can make 2-2s two or mana from that, from that point on. Same with any looters like Jace or like the new Otter. In T, when you attack, you discard a card. Perfect. You put it under the Currency Converter, get a free 2-2 two -two in the and you get a ton of value. If you have a Lelian play, all of a sudden you have a, a bigger, you know, matrix of synergies. It also works with cycling cards, like, you know, the land, uh, the, the land cyclers, Lauren Revealed, Troll of Casa Doom, uh, the Eagle, um, Oliphant, or whatever it's called. So, a lot of synergies here. Of course, the Triumphs as well. Cycling is discard a card, colon, draw a card. So, cycling a land will give you a free treasure. So, Pretty cool to think about. 
Next to last, we have one of my favorite cards, Gut, True Soul, Sell It. So whenever you attack, worth noting is you don't have to endanger Gut. You can attack with anything. You may sacrifice another creature or an artifact. Um, this means basically another one than Gut. You can, you can sacrifice the one you attack with. If you do, create a 4 once black skeleton creature token with menace that's, a tap, that's tapped and attacking. So, Gut is basically a card that triggers on attack, and so does a lot of other cards, like the 2-2 Goblin Shaman from Fable, you get the treasure. Um, Jack Rabbit, you get the tokens. So if you stack it correctly, you could attack with Jack Rabbit, get three tokens. If you put the Gut on the stack first, you get your token first, and then you can attack, uh, stack one of those tokens and get the 4-1 Menace attacking. Same with Fable, you can sack the treasure and get, you know, the 4-1 attacker while not sacrificing a better permanent. Um, so stacking those attack triggers, I could put a card like Guide of Souls in here as well, which would interact with some of the same stuff that Gut does, uh, it, where it's like, if you make tokens on attack step, you can actually get to pump using the energy. So stacking these correctly will definitely be a difference maker in your games. Um, last up, we have Spellseeker, a card that everybody knows is good with Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, Flash. Those are like the premier ones, and then the reanimator cards like Entomb um, and Reanimate itself. But I think it's worth noting that Spellseeker is also good with these secretly cheap cards in the deck, but expensive cards on the stack type cards. Uh, and the best examples I could give was Mind Twist, a card you don't really come, uh, you don't really. Think about it as a one or two mana card, but Spellseeker sees it as such. Same with Pest Infestation and same with Fourth Yelingus. So all of a sudden, you can not only double down on your blue power or flash or reanimation shenanigans, you also have an, a one two punch here. You go Spellseeker, Mind Twist the opponent's hand. You go Spellseeker, you Pest Infestation the opponent's board. You go Spellseeker, you Fourth Yelingus for a bunch of damage, maybe even win the game, get, become the monarch, etc. So this just goes to show that. Any tutors over time will get better. It's like I remember Birthing Pot in Modern. It's like the it the card might be okay right now, but since we keep printing creatures, it will only get better. Like Green Sun Zenith. It's the same point. Um, like Natural Order, like Entomb for constructed formats. Now we have Atraxa. Now we have Archon. When we got Gristlebrand, that was huge, right? We used to play terrible creatures like Jin Jataxias and stuff like that. So all in all, this is to say that Vintage Cube is easy to play, it's very hard to master, but the more of these possibilities that you, you're able to see real-time while drafting, while playing, how does this interact, how does that interact, the more likely you are to come out on top. So that's what this channel is all about. This channel is all about giving yourself a better chance to win, and we can do that by studying the format, knowing synergies, building good habits, and this is just one of those things. So. Basically, that's why I wanted to make the video, because I've been playing a lot of Vintage Cube recently, and uh, so much of this stuff will come up if you see them, right? If you don't see them, you, you, they're not going to come up, if that makes sense. So I hope that at least one of these, if not more, are you know new stuff to your arsenal, and you can put it to good use in the future. And uh, I mean, let me know if you have any favorite not obvious synergy from the cube i'd love to know that i love to build my repertoire so that's why we're here we're trying to make each other better players and uh yeah this video was no exception uh yeah as i said let me know if you have any cool um synergies i should know about or let me know about my, your favorite one from this uh list and uh yeah we uh definitely come back with more magic in the near future thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time